I am the spirit of the body of water and the soul of man. Now this is hardly this is hardly a new idea, it's hardly an original idea, but I just want to talk about it anyway, because there's not enough attention on this and it's kind of important. Uh, Carl Jung has spoke extensively on the idea that the the consciousness and the shadow is retained within the the internal aspects of the ocean, the river, the dark people's river, the sea, or the lake. Now, what made me think about doing this is because somebody I know a few months ago, I don't know them, I just know them from being around, committed suicide in a lake not far from here. And the lake is famous for a, for a monster, for a, a, it, well it was, it had, there's a legend that there was a monster on the lake and the lake was uh, exercised by a priest, which is very common in the early Christian period of this idea of bodies of water being exercised of sea monsters or lake monsters. Now, what's interesting about this idea is that Christians, early Christians like St. Columba, seem to have had made something of an industry of visiting lakes in rural Ireland, in the west of Ireland in particular, like Loch Conn, lakes in Scotland like Loch Ness, and exercising these lakes of monsters, that these lakes were repositories of monsters. I think these people were a lot more intelligent than we give them credit for. I think they were closer to psychologists, and they were aware that this subconscious issues or the shadows of these pagan communities were uh, were, were kept as repositories within these bodies of water. The idea of the monster in the lake is, is directly related to the idea of the monster in man. It's, uh, it's very deep. I was recently watching the TV series of The Mist based on the Stephen King novel and film. And there's a scene in it where it starts with the, when the, the mist first appears, it manifests itself as ro as frogs, frogs and toads coming out of a pond, a deep lake or a deep pond, representing the darkest archetypes of the of the the community, of the culture, of the the shadow aspects of what we're dealing with. It manifests from below. Now you look at the Crowley card in the top deck of the debt. The card has this specific aspect about it. There's a kind of a grim reaper, which you expect like a Cali type thing, uh, death. It's scooping up the bottom of the ocean and it's bringing it up to the surface again to recycle it, to re recreate it in a new form. It's very much a recycling, a restorative, a metamorphosis, well, no, sorry, transmigration reincarnation kind of idea that the dead bodies of dead so sailors and dead fishermen at the bottom of the sea are reanimated into existence by scooping up the dead matter at the bottom of the ocean and bubbling it towards the surface. This is a very, very powerful Jungian idea and it's subconscious in the sense that even people who are not aware of it are involved in it. Now this person, I don't want to go into too much detail, but they had a lot of personal problems and they went to the lake in order to they asked they asked to go out to the lake for some reason and they they kept were obsessed with what was in the lake uh, this is the lake where they used to, where the legend has there was a monster and this these this person apparently had a really bad drug problem and as a result they committed suicide they took their clothes off wandered into the water and they died we saw that at the, if anyone's ever grew up in my generation grew up with a BBC TV show called The Rise and Fall of Reginald Perrin. At the beginning of the program, he wanders into the ocean and comes back out again as a different person. It was to, to do it to restoration of the soul. Now, restoration of the soul is directly connected to the rejuvenation by acceptance of the shadow, by engagement with the darkness of the... Of the uh, the individual, of the society, of the culture, of the community. It's all in there. And this is what sea monsters, I'm not saying that sea monsters and lake monsters don't actually exist. I probably think they do. In fact, Crowley, and you know, I will be talking about that in my new book that's coming out. 
Crowley definitely conjured up the Loch Ness Monster out of the darkness of British Victorian society as a water elemental within Loch Ness. It's, a, it's an amazing, amazing thing when you start thinking about it and getting into it. The idea that the conscious mind and its shadow and its darkness and also the collective consciousness, unconsciousness of a society or community is held in repository in the bottom of the deepest waters. Again, Lovecraft, Cthulhu and so on. It's, it's just amazing. Come on, 